Okay. All right. So next one is <clears throat> so corrective action, preventive action, and defect repair. They already mentioned in here. Uh, what are change request type? Uh, next one is uh, cost of quality. This is important one. C cost of quality. <clears throat> so there are uh, two types of cost of quality. One is cost of conformance, and another is cost of non-conformance. So cost of conformance means uh, it's it's kind of uh, avoid failures. For example. Uh, before releasing any software or any electronic device, the company they uh, make different types of test. Mm -hmm. Is uh, that uh, for the test they spend time, they spend uh, money, so that's kind of uh, uh, cost is called cost of conformance. Mm -hmm. So it has two types. One is uh, preventive cost another is appraisal cost so preventive means um, that that thing is to prevent errors uh, like <clears throat> if you train your employee uh, to prevent any types of mistake mm -hmm. for example you, you are trained your employee uh, to be safe to handle the wars in a more efficient way or kind of things. That thing is called uh, training and that called preventive cost. Okay. So remember that training is the preventive cost. Mm -hmm. Preventive cost is uh, under the cost of conformance. Right. And there are some mock tests on that training. Got it. Or oh, okay. if you, if you uh, buy new or better equipment, for the project work, that also for the preventive cost. Okay. And for the appraisal cost, that means assess the quality. It relates to testing, inspection, destructive testing loss, or time to do it right. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will get some question that testing and inspection, what type of cost, appraisal cost. Okay. That means before releasing, you check uh, all the things right that, uh, quality yes. things those they are inspected yes they also broke some of the unit it's called distracted testing and uh, and uh, some employee they spend some time to do a uh, certain things right mm -hmm. so go for the appraisal cost right yeah <clears throat> and the cost of non-conformance means you are spending money because of the failures. Okay. That means that means um, uh, there are two types of failures. One is internal and another is external. Mm -hmm. So internal means um, failures identify the project team already okay. before it goes to the customer hand. Okay. Project team, they, they are saying that, okay, I guess there are some uh, bugs or there are some software errors. So that means it is internal failure okay. because of the teamwork. So they are they relate to rework and scrap. That means they have to do the work again. And sometimes if the uh, unit is not uh, workable, then they have to throw it scrap. Okay. And the external one is failure identify the customer. For example, uh, most of the Amazon products. Uh, they uh, they give thirty days. If you don't like the product, then you have to send it. Yeah. yeah. So for that, uh, if customers find the something wrong with the product, then they send the product to the company. Right. That means they are losing the their um, renown. Right. Also, um, it is. Uh, they are also losing the YT, mm -hmm. the YT, lost business liabilities. Okay. That means if the end user find any failures, it will be external failure cost. Okay. And I find some portions. 
warranty related. So if something said that uh, the uh, deliverables, uh, um, the customer find problem and the company have to provide the warranty, what type of cost related to this? Okay. External figure cost and this is related okay, to the- Okay, right, cost of non-conformance, okay. And external right. failure cost, okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Some things. Okay, so this is another slide. Um, you may familiar with the organizational process asset. Right. And other is called in, uh, enterprise. Yeah, in enterprise uh, inbound factor. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, yes. Yes. So most of the uh, tools and techniques. It's called ITTO, Input Tools and Technique. Right. So most of the ITTOs, uh, you, you will notice that they have the OPA and EF in common. Okay. So um, I'm not sure that, do you familiar with the OPA and EF? Yes, I've read about it. I'm pretty much okay. I've read about it, yes. So these are the list, validate scope and monitor risk. Mm -hmm. If you read Two things then other all the process are related to the OPA as an input. Mm -hmm. Only two things, badly scope and motor risk. Except oh. that all the process has input as an OPA. It's so, a common input. So list of process without OPA as an input. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can say that all process has the OPA as an input. Okay, only this does not have okay without an input. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Only validate scope and monitor risk doesn't have OPA. Without OPA. Okay, that is validate scope. And monitor risk. And monitor risk. Okay. Right. Similar to the EF as an input. So uh, you may notice that. A list of process without EF as an input. Okay. So you'll notice that uh, most of the uh, monitor and controlling process yes it doesn't have ef you see validated scope control scope control scope, scope control schedule control like cost okay. manage quality control resource implement risk response monitor risk the first one is closed project office okay so if i summarize that um, eef is an input for plan uh, for initiation, plan, and execution, not for the uh, monitor. Monitor and controlling. Monitor and controlling, and then close for the interface. Only two rest, uh, last two process, they don't have EF as an input. So planning, controlling, planning, executing, Inici and initiation, planning. Initiation, planning, and executing. Okay. As an EF as an input. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Got it. Then uh, this is the EF. So <clears throat> OPM is organizational process asset. So it has two types. One is process and procedure. Another is knowledge base. So process and procedure means uh, if I say that. Uh, when I join uh, in a new company, they have certain Excel format or some kind of Word format that I can use. That means for my daily works, organization already has some templates that I can use, like template, Excel sheet, okay. right. uh, some kind of software. There are some process. set procedures and uh, okay, in policies okay. and procedures in place that you have to use it. Okay. Right. And knowledge base means um, lesson learned, then leverage, defect history, uh, this is uh, productivity tables, etc. So lesson learned means something like that. Uh, uh, obviously, before your project, some other project manager already did some of the projects right. and they learn from the previous project how to control or how to right. uh, keep mm -hmm. the project the budget yes. so these are the lesson learned and i will i will take all of this from the organizational process mm -hmm. 
and i'm sure every company has their uh, shared right like they put all the things in and right in folder and when you go there they will refer to this folder right. and this in there mm -hmm. so that means opa is uh, control opa can be controlled by the team member okay it can be modified and it's within the team member they can modify it they can uh, update it yeah mm -hmm. and the enterprise environmental factors so enterprise environmental from the word you can understand that it's it's beyond the team limit right for example uh, if the government say that okay uh, this unit needs to be uh, needs to have the safety requirement for example they say that okay the uh, foundation height should be some kind of things to make the box uh, safe for the workers so these kind of things is out of our uh, hand that means it is controlled by the external agency right and i i guess you are familiar with the osha right osha no occupational safety uh, measurement something like uh, 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 worker they need oh, to have okay. os okay 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 occupational yeah. safety health act or whatever it is like safety and health related to Right, right. Is that you're talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Construction worker, they have to maintain yes. OSHA. Yes. Uh, safety oh, regulation. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You project are within yeah. or without OSHA. You have to. Uh, you have to maintain these rules. Right. Got. So these kind of things are the EF. Mm -hmm. Can be internal and external. External means some kind of guidelines right and always uh, for example you are working in construction department and uh, for example finance has some kind of rules or uh, hr has some kind of rules although it is in your organization but it is beyond your team uh, reach yes. and so that means you have internal things that means organizational policy procedure and or external means government policy local government policy yeah, yeah. like in here organization organization policy mm -hmm. stuff government policy market condition regulations yeah. yeah so i guess you're already familiar with that yes. yeah. okay and this one is the same thing same thing, labor laws. Yeah. This is the same thing. Okay. All right. <laughs> so this is this is the this one is the important one. Right. Estimating methods. Okay. Right. So estimation, uh, estimating method. You will find this process in the cost estimation, and uh, we have four methods. One is analogous parametry then three point and mm -hmm. bottom line. Mm -hmm. and if you want to rank which one is most efficient most accurate mm -hmm. then it is the most efficient most accurate. bottom of estimating right and this is the old one this is not efficient analogous. okay and yeah so analogous the wall for because i haven't uh, i don't remember reading anything about analogous or parametric i might have but I've read about like three point and bottom up uh, estimating. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So for the <clears throat> analogous, analogous means, for example, um, some manager or one of my managers said that, okay, I build in a five story building and I guess uh, for your six story building, it will be this cost. Okay. That okay. means he's assuming that. Uh, the new project will be the similar to the previous one. It has some kind of similarity, and based on that, he is gazing some uh, budgetary estimation. Okay. Yeah. So if I say that uh, I'm building a uh, two-story building in Nashville, probably it will be the same price uh, 
uh, in another location in Got Nash. It. Yeah. It's kind of assuming estimation. It's not the most accurate one. Okay. So people use this one usually when they first um, come to each other, then discuss what will be the uh, project boundary or budgetary estimation, some kind of brainstorming, right. not the decision one. Yeah. <clears throat> and the parametric estimation is something like that. For example, uh, someone said that, okay, um, so in, in the previous project, we uh, cut grass uh, for 500 square feet and it was cost like $1,000. So each square feet will be like $10. So based on that, you have uh, 600 square feet long, then mm -hmm. 600, it will be that kind of estimation. Okay. Got that it. means they are breaking uh, by unit by unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then estimate based on the new one. Okay. It's kind of accurate than the, the analogous one. Got it. Yeah. And 3.1, uh, it based on optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely three point mm -hmm. estimation. Three point means three optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely. Right. And the bottom one, bottom up estimation, you will get some question from there. Okay. Uh, or some question from uh, mock test. So, bottom up means <clears throat> when we develop work breakdown structure, WPS. Uh, so work breakdown structure, um, they decompose the scope into a smaller work package. Okay. So for example, if I want to paint a room, then uh, the scope is painting the room mm -hmm. and project manager will decompose the work. First he will um, purchase the paint, then he will purchase the brush, other things. Mm -hmm. And he will hire uh, people, then uh, the people will come, then they will paint the room, Got then it, yes. check the quality. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's kind of granular work. Yeah. Uh, based on that, they will estimate one by one, and then sum of all of them, then make the final budget. Mm -hmm. It's more kind of granular work, uh, granular things, then they estimate based on that. So that means you will get uh, mo uh, more accurate than the other ones. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So the uh, question will be like that. Uh, they will give you the options, A, B, C, D, and they will say that if you are the project manager, which project, which uh, estimation that will be using, which estimating tech method you will be using. Right. Bottom up estimation. Okay. But they will be situational, right? They will have the whole question like if this is this is thing and then. Yeah. Okay. The situation. Sure. Okay. Okay. So these are the things. Uh, analogous historical data. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Estimation. And in here, historical data and project parameters. So that if you find any parameters in the <clears throat> in the question, that is parametric. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can see analogous also relate to historical. Right. That also relate to historical. Historical. Here it is parametric. Parameters, yeah. So right. that's the keyword. Yeah. And three point is the same and bottom up more accurate than the analogous and parametric. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Right. Another thing is that <clears throat> you can see um, can be used with other estimating method. Okay. With uh, other estimation method and cannot be used with other estimation method. Cannot be used with other okay. estimation. Okay. Yeah. And not used for the resource estimation. This one used for the resource estimation. Resource what estimation. Resource estimation. Resource uh, in the PMP, resource means how many people, how many okay, equipment. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many equipment or mm -hmm. logistics you need to complete the project. Right. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. yeah so in a sense uh, to um, i can say i can say resource means your people your yeah. staff yeah. right okay so this one not for the resource and accept that all of the methods you can use for the resource okay. estimation all right got it next one rfx process so this is the bidding process bidding means in the procurement knowledge group um, procurement is a plan procurement then exit contact procurement control procurement and closing procurement so um, for example uh, if you want to buy a software and first you have to know uh, what are the features are available in the market right mm-hmm. and you do not know so what you will do you will invite different software vendors mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, in the email you are mentioning that okay come make a presentation and uh, we will select uh, what we like okay. then they request for information that's rfi right yeah, yeah. so exactly. they come and then uh, present their information and right. based on that you will collect all the information mm-hmm. gathering the information right um, you are not clearly defined right now mainly information uh, your information is the main key you are exactly. collecting and the proposal means after collecting all the information then yes when you will blend the information available information with your requested information right blend together and you will create an uh, requirement list that i need this this thing right this uh, request for proposal proposal yes got it yes overview understand details to to yeah statement of work yeah and then request for code means that means for code, yes when you uh, select two or three mm-hmm. events, then you are going for the negotiation yes and um, if one vendor give you less price then obviously will go right yeah that's so <coughs> it's rfi rfp rfp and rfq yes familiar with those yes all right, so next one I think is we the... should stop here today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Too much of to grass. I mean today I think this is enough for today. Yeah.